Is Africa slowly breaking apart? According to scientists, a huge plume of hot magma rising from deep inside. The ground under East Africa is changing. Deep below, the crust is pulling apart. Two vast plates, Nubian to the west and Somali to the east, are drifting in opposite directions. The motion is tiny each year, but relentless. Add it up over time, and the result is huge. The land will drop, the sea will move in, and a new ocean will form. We watched the process speed up in our century, and the moment it became clear came in 2005. That year, the Afar depression in northern Ethiopia shook for days. Over a hundred quakes hit in a week. Shocks marched along a line that was opening in the ground. Magma was rising. Pressure was building. On September 26th, the Dabahu volcano erupted. It was not the biggest blast on record, but it tore the surface. Long, deep cracks split the desert. Villages emptied. About 6,000 people fled. Livestock died. Fields and wells were left behind. For residents, it felt like the earth had turned volatile overnight. Teams rushed in with GPS and sensors. Satellites looked down from orbit. They mapped more than 60 kilometers of fresh fissures, some several meters deep and wide. Heat shimmered from the breaks. New rock cooled where magma had intruded to the surface. The crust acted like bread pulled apart. The event proved East Africa's plates were not locked. They were moving, and the crust there was thin and weak enough to fail when hot rock pushed upward. To see the full picture, follow the scar that runs from the Afar Triangle south through Ethiopia and Kenya into Tanzania and Mozambique. This is the East African Rift. It runs about 3,000 kilometers. In places, it branches into western and eastern arms. Tall cliffs frame long basins. Lakes Tanganyika and Malawi fill some of those basins. Rivers bend to find new paths. The rift is no simple crack. It is a wide zone where the surface stretches, breaks, and drops. The driver is hot. Rock in the mantle rises under the rift. As it rises, some of it melts. That melt forces its way into the crust. It wedges the plates farther apart and weakens the rock above. Faults slip. Blocks tilt and slide down. Valleys form. The melt cools and hardens into a new crust. This is the same cycle that builds sea floor at mid-ocean ridges. East Africa is one of the few places this cycle is exposed on land. Gravity shapes the rift as well. When the crust thins, it sags under its own weight. Big slabs drop along faults and create sharp cliff faces. Between them, flat floors spread out where lakes can pool. Some parts of the Afar sit below sea level already. The crust there is so thin that lava can ooze out in long curtains. The region's extremes are famous. Lava lakes at Erta Ale, boiling springs, and wide salt flats. It is harsh and striking. The birth of a new ocean follows three broad steps. First comes the Rift Valley stage, where stretching and faulting lower the land. That is where most of East Africa sits today. Second is the Gulf stage, when the lowest parts drop enough for water to invade. Narrow fingers from the Red Sea or the Indian Ocean seep into the rift. They grow as the plates continue to diverge. Third is the Ocean Basin stage. A line of volcanoes rises down the middle. Like in the Red Sea, new seafloor forms and spreads. A true ocean appears between the two sides. How long does this take? On human clocks, a long time. The best estimates say 5 to 10 million years for a true ocean to appear. That range comes from spread rates, models, and comparisons to earlier splits. The Atlantic took tens of millions of years to grow after Pangaea broke apart. The Red Sea, younger and smaller, began on land in a setting much like afar. The difference now is that we can watch similar early steps unfold with modern tools, and we can plan for hazards with far more detail. Those tools are impressive. GPS stations set into bedrock can detect motion of a few millimeters per year. They show steady separation across the rift. Satellite radar interferometry, or INSAR, compares images taken days apart and reveals tiny rises and drops in the ground. It can see magma move under the surface. Thermal sensors spot hot zones near the surface. Seismic arrays pick up small swarms of quakes that trace magma paths or mark the sites of fresh fault slips. Together, these streams reveal where the crust thins, where stress builds, 
and where the next break might occur. Computers translate data into forecasts. Models simulate how the plates move, how the crust breaks, and how melt flows. They test different heat sources and rock strengths. Many runs point to the Afar Triangle as the likely source of the first seawater. Others highlight focused zones along the Kenyan and Tanzanian segments, where deep lakes already sit in narrow troughs. Machine learning scans seismic noise and satellites for patterns humans miss. The result is better early warnings for eruptions and ground failure. Life on the rift is shaped by that restless ground. The Afar region is hot and dry, water is scarce and precious, yet people have adapted with skill. In places, communities condense geothermal steam to make clean water. Warm ground helps dry food and evaporate salt. Obsidian, a volcanic glass common here, has served as a toolstone for ages. Local knowledge includes ways to judge which rocks are fresh and fragile and which are safe to use. These practical tests matter when volcanoes are part of daily life. There are national choices too. Geothermal power is a major opportunity. Ethiopia and Kenya already use steam from rift fields to make electricity with low carbon emissions. Those plants can expand and help power cities far from the rift. Volcanic ash builds fertile soils when there is water to farm. That boosts yields. But the risks are real. Quakes damage roads and homes. Ash clogs the air and rivers. Lava can cut key routes. Good codes, land use plans and alert networks save lives and money. The stronger the monitoring and response systems, the safer the communities that live on this shifting ground. Ecosystems will not stand still either. When land splits, life splits. Isolated valleys become cradles for new species. You can see that story in Madagascar, which broke away much earlier and now holds plants and animals found nowhere else. Future shores could grow mangroves, reefs and estuaries, where today there is scrub and grassland. Some species will shrink in range, others will migrate or expand. Over long spans, the net effect is more diversity in more varied habitats. Climate will adjust as geography changes. Large water bodies shift winds, rain, and heat. Coasts near a future sea could grow cooler and wetter, while inland plateaus could dry out. This will shape farming, cities, and transport over time. None of this happens in a decade. It unfolds across centuries and beyond, but small choices made now can relieve future stress. It helps place this in Earth's larger cycle. Continents collide and split. Oceans open and close. The East African Rift is one line in that long story, but it is a line we can measure with precision. It shows that maps are snapshots. The 2005 Dabahu event was a wake-up call because it pulled that lesson out of textbooks and into people's homes. Another note on danger and scale. Headlines can make it sound like the ground will rip wide open tomorrow. That is not how it works. There will be local crises, fissures after quake swarms, ash on towns, lava across roads. Those are serious, but the rise is slow. Most motion is measured in millimeters each year. That pace gives time to prepare, to build wisely, and to use the rift's energy to improve lives. Imagine a future map. A narrow blue arm cuts into the Horn of Africa. On its east side sits a long island made from parts of Ethiopia, Somalia, Djibouti, and perhaps pieces of Kenya and Eritrea. Think of it as a cousin of the Arabian Peninsula, which pulled away to open the Red Sea. On the west side sits the rest of Africa, with a reshaped coast in Kenya and Tanzania. Along the shores, ports and fisheries grow. New trade routes appear. Since 2005, the rift has not been quiet. Smaller magma intrusions and fault slips continue up and down the system. The region has become a living earth science lab. Researchers partner with local experts. Forecasts improve. Better hazard maps guide roads and power lines. People living on crack are not just subjects in a study. They are partners and leaders. In the end, this story is humbling and hopeful. The planet is alive. It moves whether we notice or not. But we can notice. We can measure. We can learn. We can reduce risk and increase opportunity. East Africa is teaching us, in slow motion and in rare bursts of drama, how a continent changes shape and how a new ocean begins. Watching that unfold is not just about rocks, it is about people and choices.
If this journey helped you see the ground in a new way, share it. The more we understand our shifting planet, the better we can live with it all. One day, far ahead, a child may look at a globe and see two Africas with a sea between them. When that day comes, they will be seeing the end of a process we can watch begin now.